Blonde, 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 blonde. Excuse me. Hi. Could you please tell me where I'm looking? Blonde, blonde, blonde. Hi. Excuse me. Can you? Hello. You see, you see a theme here. You noticing a theme? <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Um, I wonder if you guys. I I need to change to become more accepted here in Iceland. So that's gonna happen in here. I'll be right back. I'm gonna come out looking fabulous. <laughs> that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe, getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning, if you're about to drink something that makes a horse do this, you might want to reconsider. You'll see more of that later, but first. Yeah. Newly sunlight, baby. Mm. Woo! Iceland, an island nation in the North Atlantic, first settled by peace-loving Irish monks around 800 AD, and then overrun by Norse Viking marauders about 100 years later. Most tourism here appeals to the nature-loving outdoor types. And while I'll definitely get to lay the land, cool. My main purpose is to get a taste of the booze. Hey, skull! <laughs> From some homemade hooch to candy in a bottle. Some of the nastiest shit we can find alcohol-wise. And some stuff that's out and out scary. This is the Black Death. Skull. Skull. See if my blonde or should I say, fiery yellow hair, gives me the strength to go. Three sheep's eyes out! I begin my Icelandic adventure in the countryside on a mission to experience some backwoods drinks. This is, after all, home to some of the most stunning geological formations on Earth. For instance, Let's talk about plate tectonics. The Earth's lithosphere, or outer crust, is divided up into separate moving plates. There are transform faults, where the plates sort of slide by each other in different directions. There are convergent faults, where the plates move into each other. And there are divergent faults, where the plates move away from each other. This one, in Thingvellir, Iceland, is a divergent fault where the North American plate is slowly pulling away from the European plate. Of course, if you're more into hot springs, the place to go is Hakadalur. Yep, that's a geyser. This isn't just a geyser, it's the geyser. Here it goes, I can see it gurgling. Its specific name is Geysir, derived from the Icelandic word Yosa, or gusher to you and me. It's from the name of this specific hot spring that all erupting hot springs have generically come to be known in English as geysers. Cool. After taking in the sights, we journey to an undisclosed location where an anonymous guy has agreed to meet us to talk about Icelandic moonshine, known in these parts as Landi. Hi. I'm Zane. You are a nondescript person who sells Landi? It's not actually against the law to make Landi in Iceland. You gotta make it for your own use. Your own consumption. However, it is illegal to sell, which is why this dude is all blurry and his voice is modulated. Plus, it looks kinda cool. 
Londi became popular during Iceland's period of prohibition between 1915 and 1922. And though alcohol is available for legal purchase today, there's still motivation for making it yourself. Alcohol is very expensive, so why not make it yourself? Londi is usually distilled from a base of potatoes, but it's often made from sugar or even stale bread. Landy. It's like candy for big people. Grown-ups. I don't know what this stuff is made from, but judging from the horse's reaction to the smell, it's not nothing. He's not feeling it. So what will I feel? Speaking of drinks that are illegal to sell, we now press on to Auerberg County, where at the end of this remote gravel road lies an old barn where they make something that's only recently been legalized in Iceland. Almost exactly a year ago, this place was a barn full, okay. of, full of hay. This is John, and he's the owner and maker of the beverage we're about to drink. And this is, um, this is a microbrew. Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what you're thinking. A microbrew, as in beer? When I hear about a drink that's only recently been legalized, images of exotic elixirs come to mind. But strangely enough, even though the prohibition of spirits in Iceland was lifted in 1922, alcoholic beer remained illegal here until 1989. So beer drinking here then is a relatively new... Yeah. Phenomena. It's quite new phenomenon. Since then, a few major beer makers have come to dominate the market. But fuller-bodied microbrews, like the one made here at the Olvesholtz Brewery, are even newer to Iceland. The name of this beer is um, Skalfuti, and it means kick-ass beer. Not exactly. Not exactly. No, it means uh, quake. Quake? Yes in uh, relation to uh, the area we live in. Yes. We have an earthquake crack right Yeah, you guys right have a lot of te tectonics and st yeah. stuff. We brought electronics, you guys have tectonics. Skialfti is considered a premium lager. It's made from the four basic ingredients of Icelandic water, malted barley, hops, and yeast, with more of an emphasis on the hops than most mass-produced lagers. It's very hoppy. It's very hoppy and malty. And it makes me very happy. Yeah, me too. And it makes me happy that you're happy with it. It makes me happy that I make you happy to drinking this and being happy about being happy. For the time being, this is the only beer he sells, and it's only available in Iceland. I'm oh. empty my glass. <laughs> but because microbrewing is relatively new around here, John's experimenting with some new flavors, and he's agreed to let me try one of his prototypes. All right, so this is... This is from our uh, experiments. It's experimental. We do, we do a lot of experiments. Yeah. We do too. Curtis and I do experiments, but I think you're probably talking about something different. This is made from barley, water, yeast, and flavored not only with imported hops, but also with locally grown meadows wheat and angelica. The angelica plant, the root of the angelica plant, kept this nation alive for uh, 800 years. Really? Yeah. Why? Because we didn't have any potatoes. So is it like they a came later. it's like a carrot or something? It's like a, a, a vegetable. A vegetable. Uh, a big big root. According to the Three Sheets Botany Manual, Angelica has been prized for its medicinal properties for centuries. It's believed to heighten your immune system by combating some bacteria, fungal infections, and viral infections. It's commonly used in teas throughout Scandinavia. And if you saw our London show, you might recall that Angelica root and Angelica Seed are two of the nine botanicals used to flavor London Dry Beef Eater Gin. <laughs> the aftertaste is uh, Angelica. It's quite nice. It is pretty nice. Yeah, it's very refreshing. Wow. It tastes like a half of bison. Yeah, way. right. Yeah, many people say so, and I, I, I feel so myself. As for whether or not this beer will ever make it to market, I don't know. But I do know that an innovative beer culture is blossoming in Iceland, and it was great to taste it in its infant stage. Skull. Skull. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, does Black Death taste as bad as it sounds? God, that's a horrible concoction.
Day two in Iceland, and I'm in the capital city of Reykjavik. And while I already have the blonde hair, I'm told that to truly summon my inner Viking, I need to go to a place called the Viking Village to eat and drink with the owner, Johannes. Who's that? That's Jim the Viking. Looks familiar. Jim the... Come me translate. Jim the... Uh, Viking is bringing us a spread of traditional Viking foods. Johannes says that eating this food is a sign of bravery. And if I do it, I'll earn a place in Valhalla, Viking warrior heaven. So, am I up for the challenge? Will you get me sick? Yeah, no, 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 no. This is our Viagra, actually, in Iceland. We don't take any Viagra in Iceland. We eat shark. It just smells, it smells foul. Some say it's like a strong cheese. It's like cheese and rotten fish. Before I go any further, why would shark meat smell like cheese? Professor, help us out with this. Professor Reed. The mad scientist. Why, yes, Dane. What you're about to eat is this lovely creature known as a basking shark. The meat of a basking shark is actually toxic to humans due to a high uric acid content. That's urine to you lay people. <laughs> But here in Iceland, Vikings discovered that they could bury the shark meat in sand, allowing it to ferment and hang it to dry, leaving it toxin-free. <laughs> no toxins. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, and then you have to take the stuff out to Yeah, it. my pleasure. These sheep horns are traditional Viking drinking vessels. And the drink is a 75 proof spirit called Brennevin, which literally translates to burn wine. The word burn referring to the distillation process and the word wine kind of lost in translation because this beverage is not distilled from fermented grapes, but from fermented potato pulp and flavored with cumin, caraway, and angelica. Most Icelanders <laughs> call it the Black Death. Wow, that's not what I expected. It definitely washed away the taste of fermented shark meat, but will it make eating this any easier? You want to try the testicles now? Excuse me? You want to try the testicles? Johannes tells me that these sheep testicles have also been prepared in a most unusual way. It takes sour milk and put the meat in it, and, and that preserves it? That's right, and that's how we keep it over the winter. According to the Three Sheets Nutritional Handbook, milk contains lactose. It goes sour when the lactose, which is a sugar, is fermented into lactic acid, which acts like a preservative, much like vinegar. They feel like testicles. Good they answer. smell like testicles. And they taste like, uh, let's just say I need another shot of Black Death. Johannes tells me that I've almost earned Viking honors. And I can see that you are a brave man. You are welcome to my Viking tea. Yeah! But not without a little ceremony first. Drink this, my friend, and feel the power of the Vikings. Drink, skull! You feel the power? I feel it in my nipples. Listen very carefully. Sorry. I say this only once. To every dark when this blow them. We have Ram Hafiska Viking as a new hero crown by me. Now that I've experienced Iceland's past, I'm ready for its present, which calls for a stop at a bar called the B5. So you're gonna make um, some cocktails. Yeah. Uh, With uh, Icelandic ingredients. Icelandic ingredients. Stainy, the bartender, says that the concept of a cocktail in Iceland is about as new as beer here. Because prior to 1989, there was really only one kind of cocktail in these parts. If you can call it that. They took like non-alcoholic Pilsner and added brandy bean or moonshine to it. So people would drink non-alcoholic, they would, they would make yeah. non-alcoholic beer and then you'd add some yeah. moonshine to it. Sweet. He says that the emerging cocktail scene here relies mostly on existing recipes with Icelandic twists. Now, Stainy 
It looks like you're making a mojito. I'm actually not, because in a mojito, you put rum. Yes. But we're in Iceland, so we're gonna put brennivin. Brennivin. Because brennivin tastes, can I swear on this program? You can swear if you want. Tastes like shit. Uh, and one of the few ways to mask the taste of brennivin is mint. And sugar. And sugar and lime. It's not that bad, really. Compared to... <clears throat> Compared to regular brunt of it. Let's give you a shot, just for comparison. This is the Black Death. So why do they call it Black Death? Staney tells me it comes from a failed government campaign to discourage drinking. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go. God, that's a horrible concoction. Next, we're going to do... Uh, a kaiparoshka, which is a, a Russian drink, obviously. Kaiparoshka? Sounds like a kaiparinha. It's a spin off of a kaiparinha with uh, vodka instead of kashasha rum. For those of you who missed the Rio de Janeiro show, a kaiparinha is lime, sugar, kashasa, and ice. As for the kaiparushka, it's a bit confusing. Actually, the original vodka is imported from Scotland, but it's uh, transported to Iceland and filtered through Icelandic lava. Okay, so how does this Brazilian, Russian, Scottish, Icelandic glass of confusion taste? It's pretty good. It is. What is that? Come on, Stanny. You know, blondes really do have more fun. <laughs> Staney says that while these are fun Icelandic twists on traditional cocktails, most Icelanders don't really drink them. They're more into shots. And we just shots that all Icelanders love, but most foreigners hate. What is this? This is, these are shots made from opal and topaz, which are licorice candies, which we all grow up eating. Really? Yeah. So wait, this is a candy for children? Not this exact bottle, but... No, but this name. This, yeah, topaz, this and, and the logo. And then they made it into booze? Yeah. That was a hell of a marketing campaign. That's right. The makers of Icelandic candies decided to make liquefied adult versions featuring the same candy flavors with alcohol contents hovering around 25% or 50 proof. They're sweet, boozy, and more geared towards the palate of someone who grew up on the candy. Wow. Staney says they're usually drunk straight, not in cocktail form. But like most outsiders, I'm not so keen on drinking them straight. Which gets me wondering, could they be improved through a little mixology? Coming up, I find a not-so-willing bartender to attempt what may be the impossible. Well, somebody duped me into making cocktails with uh, some of the nastiest we can find alcohol-wise. Right now, I'm in Iceland's capital of Reykjavik, and I've come to a bar called Oregon, where I'm challenging Ragnar the bartender to a showdown to see if either of us can invent a cocktail using Icelandic candy-inspired liqueurs. Called around, asked a couple of friends what they'd do, and they just laughed. People hung up on me. <laughs> just don't use it, yeah? Ragnar kicks it off with ice, a shot of Jack, a shot of opal with lime juice, shaken over ice, and poured over ice with fresh raspberries. To make you look good. Mmm, it's interesting. Oh, God. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not alone in my opinion, because every time a customer samples it, they pass it on to the next person, the proof that nobody likes it. Okay, my turn. That's raw sugar. <laughs> Some mint, lime juice. Right now, I'm mulling it. We have crushed ice. What's this one? It's the green one. <laughs> <laughs> I finish it off with lemon-lime soda, then shake and pour over ice. <laughs> it tastes like toothpaste gone bad. Just when it appears like I've struck out, look. That guy's not passing it on. What's he doing? Wait, look at... I've had it all, actually. <laughs> Zane won, Ragnar nothing. Okay, so at least I have one satisfied customer under my belt. 
But not to be outdone, Ragnar breaks out a shot of Topas, a shot of Grand Marnier, and a shot of Icelandic vodka. Just when I think it's complete, he goes for his secret weapon. You son of a bitch. That's right, cherry syrup. It's a competition. 30 tricks are allowed, yeah? Okay, how does it compete with my last entry? You guys can, you guys can think about it. You can confirm, and it's a very smart decision to think about it. But then... <laughs> this one's good. That's the best time to get rid of it. It's good? Yeah. It's good. Okay, when it comes to Icelandic candy-inspired booze, you can please some people sometimes, but you can't please everyone all the time. It's the next morning. I'm cold, I got a coating of sugary syrup inside my mouth, and I've spent the three sheets budget on expensive Icelandic drinks. I need something cheap and hot. And I'm told the place to go for that is a legendary local hangout called Sea Baron. What's your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, my name is Bjorn Fjorkinson. Herg Flugerbot. All right, so this is this is the famous lobster soup, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, I almost asked why it's so famous, but it's delicious. The quality of food is not the only reason this place is so popular among locals. You're not gonna eat your soup? Because Reykjavik is a very expensive city, it's not easy to come by a no-frills, affordable restaurant like this one. This is the proprietor, the owner, El Jefe yeah. Patrone. Yep. Owned by this guy. Kajartan. He doesn't speak a word in English, so you can say whatever you like. Can I take his glasses? Yeah. <laughs> According to Elizabeth, the way a true Viking treats a hangover is with a little hair the dog. <laughs> the vodka we're drinking is El Dorogis. Of course, with Kajartan, one drink awesome. isn't quite enough. That is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Skull. 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 Can you have him say skull? Have him say it like he's angry. You can say skull, and say don't stop either. Skull. Skull. Okay. It's been great eating, drinking, and laughing with Kajartan. Can I take him with me everywhere just to laugh at the nonsense that I say? Yeah. That would be awesome. Do you want to go to America with me? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, English. He goes, no, 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 hell no, I don't want to be this guy. <laughs> no, I can't take Kajartan with me. I can take home memories of Black Death. Wow, that's not what I expected. Moonshine. He's not feeling it. <laughs> and syrupy drinks that make you pucker. Which don't seem all that bad when you're rocking the yellow hair. You dyed your hair brown? I dyed my hair blonde so that I would fit in. <laughs> and you dyed your hair brown because yeah. you knew I was coming? <laughs> but then that, that didn't work out very well. Eight, stay. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Go. I found him one. <laughs> my mother. Why do you want to thank your mother? For the support that she's always given me. <laughs> this is a big moment. <laughs>